First, it was InfoPath, then Silverlight. Eventually, Internet Explorer joined the ranks of the dead. Will jQuery be next? Can we just address the fact that we are all so happy that Internet Explorer is dead? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I think in a lot of ways, actually. So let, full disclosure, jQuery is not dead. Um, it's, just, no. it's just that a lot of the stuff that jQuery provides can be done natively in modern browsers. And I think that's the, that's the point about the fact that Internet Explorer is now officially dead you know do, is jquery as needed as it used to be because i think jquery right. was the thing that sort of patched that internet explorer experience so that you could write well, a yeah. code base and address internet explorer and other more modern browsers at the same right time. i mean jquery was originally introduced if i remember correctly as a compatibility library it was there right. because all the browsers were a little different and yep. then they all got to be the same except for Internet Explorer. <laughs> and now I guess Edge solves that by having right. an IE mode that works with the old enterprise apps that that haven't got updated. Right. And the actual browser is Chromium, which is super compatible with everything. So Exactly. So today we're absolutely going to be talking about those things you can do natively. All right. Here we are. Here we are. Ooh. I'm starting out in the results screen because what I want to talk about first is just to go over some examples of um, what's called CSS selector syntax. And so this is mm. what jQuery used. And so there's just ways to, um, to use the CSS selectors to get at the elements that you want. And so we're going to start by talking about um, query selector. So um, query selector can be um, executed against the window, against the document, or against an element, a specific element. I'm gonna use document for all the examples, but just know that um, you can use those. And we'll have links to references so you can read more about it if you're interested. So um, just to be clear, if I'm getting this right, instead of document.querySelector of selector, in jQuery, I would have done dollar sign selector. Mm -hmm. But That's it's the right. Same does it's the, the same, same thing. Same thing. Yep. Except for jQuery would return you a jQuery object, which was this special thing. That's true. And this would return you what? The actual. This returns you an element. So the actual case, DOM element. Nice. The actual DOM element in this case. So starting out with query selector, this um, returns the first matching element to your selector. So it's important okay. to understand that if there are more than one that match the query selector, it's gonna find the first one starting from the top of the dependencies of the thing that you're query selecting from, right? Mm -hmm. So um, to get an, el an element by ID, you can, I mean, obviously you can use get element by ID, but you can also use the query selector um, with a pound sign and the ID of the element. So you can, you can use that. Um, another way is if you want to find an element by the HTML tag, you can do a query selector for the element. Um, you can also then find an element by an one of its attributes. And so since you can actually uh, make up your own attributes. Uh, if you had an attribute maybe called data-id or data-output, uh, excuse me, where the ID was data-output, you could do a query selector where you use the braces, that means an attribute, so where data-id equals data-output. And so it's going to find the elements with that particular attribute that has that particular value. You can also then query um, by class name. So you can say, give me any elements that have the class, my class, for instance. So that's another way to do that. And you can, of course, combine these together. So you can do, you know, all the divs with this attribute or, or things like that. Um, nice. So then in addition to that, you have this query selector all. And so this gets you back an array of elements or nodes. And so in this case, um, you just change what your 
uh, what your property is, but all the selectors are the same. So if you do query selector all with data ID, just data ID and no value, you could get all of the elements where that have a data ID tag. Doesn't matter what the value is, uh, or excuse me, attribute, not tag. Um, get all the div elements on the page, just pass mm -hmm. in div instead, um, or get all of the elements with that a particular class. So that's um, another way that you can do that. Um, switching over, let's go back to the JavaScript here because um, we have, I have some uh, other things that you can do. So create element. So if I come, if I, well, if I click create element, it says, you know, oh, this is a new element. Woo, nice. fancy, okay. right? But let's come back over to the JavaScript and look quickly. So I have some functions that I defined really quickly here. Um, you can just do document. Um, um, uh, create element and say, I want a new div. And then all I did in this case is I went and used this, the standard get element by ID and appended the child, uh, uh, a child element of the new element that I created. So that's how yep. to create an element. Um, and it's sort of now by inheritance, I've explained append child. So, you know, there's mm -hmm. appending a new child element. This is kind of handy for the LI example. So if we come down here and say, if I want to append a child, you know, I can add a new element to that ULLI class there. Cool. Um, getting and setting attributes. So, you know, if I want to set this attribute to pink, I can do that. So let's uh, come back to our JavaScript here and we'll have a set attribute. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm saying get element by ID. I have a, an element that I called get attribute. And I'm going to set the style background color to pink. And then I can update the inner text of that element to um, say the word pink. So I'm just effectively getting the attribute back and setting it to the inner text. So inner text, excuse me, so that you can kind of see that I can set it and I can get mm -hmm. it. Um, and then last one is the event listeners. So mm. I have it on the other side, but all of the those buttons that you saw in my results are have buttons that have an event listener. And the way that I um, assign what the click event is going to do is by um, adding an event listener to the click event and then saying, okay, well, when the a click event is happens on the uh, create element button, then I'm going to call the create element function, which is this right here. Okay. So that is the get element by ID. Yeah, that's great. I mean, what's left that you could have done with JavaScript, with jQuery? Uh, lots. There's a lot of other functions that we sort of didn't cover here about finding elements in relation to each other and other things like that. So there's more goodness that could be done. Um, and as I sort of said at the beginning, you know, you can get an element and then use that element to query select something else. So you can sort right. of traverse the DOM that way. Another thing that you can do is if you put commas in between those selector syntax that you that I was explaining, that can be an or function. So you can um, oh, create nice. a, a few query selectors and then say, you know, if the if the data ID is this or the class is this or you know some other thing about it. So you can use commas in between those to sort of combine a bunch of query selectors to get, or, uh, together to form sort of an or situation. Well, that's great. And I guess the other things I can think of are not under the DOM manipulation banner. Things like fetch mm -hmm. um, is now the built-in way to do a uh, the, the uh, equivalent of, of a REST call from JavaScript, sorry, yep. from jQuery. And um, promises, I remember I used to use jQuery for promises and now they're built in and yep. they even have, they don't, jQuery doesn't have async await, does it? It doesn't, like on our oh. last video. So. Yeah, there you go. If you missed that one, go check it out for sure. Absolutely. So. Cool. So, hey, did you like this video? Was it interesting? Did you uh, get anything new? Would you like to learn anything more about this topic? Please like this video and consider subscribing to the Boycanos channel to get notified of any new videos updated. Um, and check out maybe our async await video, the last one, uh, to learn more about that. Great. Thanks for joining Thanks. us today on Browser Native.